Hey everyone, it's Kelly here from Kelly Chassis Fine Art for another episode of Creating with Kelly. This week we're going to cover alcohol inks and create this wonderful pansy painting using a chameleon blender pen. I do want to mention I do have full online classes. You can find them over there at my website at kellylynart.com where I have over 2,500 students in 85 different countries and over 24 online classes that have lifetime access. So head over there and check those out. I will be looking in the wrong spot. I'll be there. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I have new videos every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So make sure you click that subscribe button and click the little bell and you'll never miss one. So today we're covering alcohol ink pansy painting using a chameleon blender pen and we'll be doing this on translucent Yupo paper. I wanted to give a special thank you to Legion Paper for sending me these pads to give them a try. So I have my original watercolor sketch here. I have my translucent Yupo paper and I'm just going to cut myself up a little piece here. I will put the links for you guys as always in my Amazon shop and I have the 9 by 12 pieces here but they also come in the smaller 5 by 7s which is what the watercolor paper is underneath. So you can see the translucent paper is really translucent. You can see right through it which makes it really easy to trace with. So I'm just going to really quickly trace out my original watercolor I have done and I will make sure to put a link here for you again if you missed it last week. I had a PDF that you could print out and that way you could copy it and follow along with me if you would like. So I'll put the link down below for you under show more and you can just click on that and it will take you to my sign up for that. And if you happen to miss last week's watercolor pansy, I have uh, the link up here for you on the right hand side of the top here and you can watch that if you want to see the difference between the two. So we'll be using the Chameleon Blender Pen, I'm going to be using Panada Alcohol Inks, and we'll be using the colors Sun Bright Yellow and Passion Purple, as well as a little Baja Blue and also the Rainforest Green. And all of those come in the Jacquard's Panada uh, Exciter Pack. Now I just want to show you, if you don't have a blender pen, you can very easily use a paintbrush as well. This is just a real small, fine detail brush and it loads up pretty heavily so it's a little bit harder to get those lighter shades but you can see where I'm tapping in this is just a little bit of discolored pigment that I had from my alcohol and I wanted just to see if I could lighten this up without making it bloom too much and you can see what that did it, it did lighten it but it does create a little bit of texture in here let's go ahead and put a little bit of purple in here You can see it looks pretty good, but I do have a little bit of that um, blending out, moving out of the area that I really want that alcohol to be in. So I'm going to switch now to the blender pen so you can see the difference here. So everything is just moving around places I don't want it to be, so we're going to see if we can bring this back. Now I'm using, there's two sides to the blender pens. This is the side that is not quite as stiff. Look at that. That, that is the color that I'm looking for, that really light shade of yellow. And you can see that I can blend out a little bit of that darker purple shade in there. And let's just see if, how much we can lift this other area here. It really creates a nice soft color. Now I do have a paper towel off to the side here with me and as I am blending this in I'm wiping off that pigment off onto my towel and you can see that I can blend all of that right in. It does not take a whole lot of color for the blender pen and I'm just using what is here and I'm just taking that shade and blending it throughout that whole area. So this is a much lighter shade than the original color that I had. And if you look at our photo here, it is pretty bright. The yellow is pretty bright on this section, but it does have those softer 
areas in there as well. So do me a favor too, you guys, if you like having the photo up here as a reference, can you please comment down below? Yes. <laughs> so I know um, that you guys like it and I will continue to try to put the reference photos if I indeed have a reference photo that is. A lot of times I just do this from the top of my head. Um, but if I have a reference photo, I will be happy to add it for you. So again, make sure you type in down below, yes and I will get the message. <laughs> all right, so I am just continuing here with the yellow, trying to hit all of those areas that I see yellow. Now, this is a little bit lighter through here, so I'm really taking that blender pen and trying to blend a lot of that darker shade out. And then we'll be going up here on this little area, move yellow here. And you can see how bright yellow this is. So it doesn't matter if we're just filling in those areas. This really helps me at least when I fill in some of those values of those areas and it's less overwhelming for my eye to be able to see what color goes where. Some artists will work very small areas at one time, but I have a tendency to go all over the board because I like to block everything in and it's just how my brain works. It works better for me that way. So I think we're gonna, this is like a, almost a grayish color in here. So I added just a little bit of purple to that, very, very little, and that was the color that I came out with. We'll go back into the same shade. I wish that shade looks really close to it, doesn't it? I got lucky there. <laughs> it's almost just like a, a dirty, a dirty color of alcohol, almost a brownish gray. So let's go with the purple. So I just I squirted a little bit of the Twilight Purple in my palette over here, and I am using this blender pen basically like a I would a brush. Now when I did the Valentine's Day card a few weeks ago, uh, you'll remember that I used the watercolor brush filled with alcohol. And that works very similar to the blender pen, but I think the blender pen is just a little bit softer, a little smoother, and you don't have as much change in the color um, with the pen or the water brush pen. It is um, has more alcohol in it, obviously, so it really lightened things a lot more and you have a lot more movement. This is more controlled with, with the blender pen. And if you want to take a look at that video with the water brush, I'll put that link up here on the right-hand side for you as well so you can check that one out and see the difference between, between the two. So I'm just deepening the shade. You can see it was lighter. You can really just change this as you as you go along. If you want a little lighter, you can um, use less ink. If you want to darken it, you can go a little bit heavier with the ink. So I'm just dipping that tip of that blender pen right into my ink palette and it picks it right up. And then as I go along, it gets a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. So you can see how much lighter it is right here because I've been using it. And that goes a long way. Just that little bit of ink really can uh, blend out quite a ways. So I really can block in my colors quite easy with this. So I'm not sure how many of you have taken one of my online courses, but I did want you to know if, um, if you are a Udemy or a Skillshare student of mine, I do have a private closed Facebook group just for my students and when you sign up for the classes all that information is in there on where to sign up and it's just a great place for you to share what you're learning and we're really trying to, to grow that for everyone and I, I will post things in there but you get so much information from from all of our, our students in there as well so so if you do take a course make sure that you head over there to the Facebook group and and sign up for that as well 
So you can see here, I have put in my really deep shades of purple here. I'm trying to get a little bit darker as we go along. I've done my blocking in for most of those main colors of yellow and purple. And you can see here where you could just keep adding those deeper shades. And I'm dipping the tip of my blender pen right directly into my paint. And you'll get a really nice dark shade. Now obviously, the more you continue to work it, the lighter that shade becomes. You might have to dip it back in there again for some more. And of course, if you do change your colors, make sure that you dip your tip into either some blending solution or cleanup solution by Panada or even uh, the 91% alcohol. And just take that and clean that off on the paper towel. And that will keep it pretty fresh. You may have to do it a couple of times if you have these really deep colors like this dark purple but it, it works quite well and uh, releases those those shades pretty quickly. So we'll continue lighting this up here. I do see I have that more of that bright yellow that's up here. We'll deepen that shade of purple. And now I'm going back into that yellow. Now you can see because I had a little bit of that purple left on there, I get that really deep shade of yellow and it's really not the color that's in there. <laughs> so I'm going to have to work on that to lighten that up again. It's just the wrong shade. It's more of a orange hue, brown hue. So I cleaned off the brush or the chameleon pen again and you can see here it started to lighten it and then it it stopped. It's still a little bit orange, so you want to wipe that off again and you might have to continue to work this area a little bit. And be careful if you go around that purple, it picks it right back up again and it wants to turn it more of that orangey brown shade. So we'll let that dry a little bit, give it a few minutes, and then go back into it. You can see here it worked. It, it lightened it right up. So I'm going to speed this up now for you and let you guys see just the, the blues here and the greens. We're going to pop those in there and then we'll slow it down for some of the finer details at the end. And I do want to mention um, I'm posting on Instagram now daily, uh, a couple times a day actually. And my goal here is to get 10,000 subscribers by the end of this year. Ha! <laughs> I'm at 1,150 something right now. So if you haven't subscribed, I would love to have you head over there and check that out and leave me a comment on your favorite painting that you see on there and just let me know you came over from YouTube. So I always like to see who is coming from where, where are you finding me? So make sure you do stick around to the end of the video and I will post what next week's demo is going to be. Looking forward to that. It's actually a very pretty one. I, I had a fun time making it. So you can see here, I have switched now to my Signo gel pen. This is a gel pen made by the company Uniball. And I love this one. If you are just starting with your gel pens, um, I want you to know that this will not stay white. If Because I'm working on this while this is still a little damp the colors will eventually kind of pick up in that white so where it's purple it will turn a very light shade of purple. Now if you want to keep that bright white you can go ahead and seal your painting before you use your white gel pen with the Kmar varnish and then use the white gel pen once that's dry and that will keep it white and I do recommend that you do a second spray on there when you are finished because that will um, protect the pen so it doesn't rub off. Now I'm going to switch back to that fine brush just to put a little bit more of that purple in here. I have mixed that with the yellow and the purple so it gives me that little bit deeper shade. It's got more of a brown hue to it. We'll add just a few details there. Uh, so I am using that fine brush and just putting some veining in the flower now. And you do want to try to follow how those petals are so they kind of fold over. So get your veining going in that same direction as you're doing that. And this really is just all of the final touches here. So you can see how I'm following that petal down as I'm doing that. 
Before we finish up, I just wanted to tell you, actually, if you've been over on my Instagram page, you may have already seen it, but what we're going to do next week is a lovely little moody, I call it a moody birch tree. And we'll be doing this on tile and I'll walk you through all of the steps on this for next week. So you can see the finished piece here with the alcohol inks. And then I'm going to show you the difference here between this and here is the watercolor. And again, I'll put that link up for you if you haven't had a chance to watch the watercolor one and grab the PDF for that. I hope you liked the video. If you did and you found this useful, please make sure to give us a like, possibly a share and a thumbs up, and we'll see you guys next week. Take care.